Hi guys and girls, I'm Obsidian Ant, and welcome to my exploration tutorial for Elite Dangerous. Elite features a vast galaxy, over 400 billion star systems, trillions of planets, and many unknown phenomena. It makes sense then that the game offers a variety of tools to help discover these things, and two of these tools are the Full Spectrum System Scanner, also known as the FSS, which allows us to discover things from a distance. The other is the Detailed Surface Scanner, which allows us to map the surfaces of stellar bodies. In this video, I'm going to walk you through how to use these two tools. Another tool for exploration and discovery is the Codex, a kind of living encyclopedia, and this we will take a look at in another video. It's also worth keeping in mind that if you don't use the default keybinds, then you will need to set some up for the exploration tools. You can see links to images that will help you do this in the video description. So let's get into the tutorial then and look at how to use the full spectrum system scanner. Now the first thing you're going to need to do is to make sure you're in super cruise as the exploration tools will not work in regular flight modes. Also make sure you've bound your discovery scanner to a fire group in your ship's right hand panel as you're going to need this in just a moment. Now once in super cruise use your keybinder to open the FSS. This will bring up an overlay that will allow you to discover stellar bodies within this particular star system. The part of this interface you're going to want to pay the most attention to, at least initially, is the spectral analysis down at the bottom of the interface. Now use the discovery scanner using the fire group that we showed just a moment ago, and you will see it reveals the stellar bodies and other things that are locatable within this star system. Now up on the top right of the screen you can see the number of signals that have been detected. This will include things such as unidentified signal sources, moons, planets and everything else, down the bottom left you can see the percentage of the system so far uncovered. Now one thing you can see here on the interface is that any signal actually has a blue heat spot. This could be a planet and in this case it is exactly that. Down on the bottom left it shows you the distance to the planet. On the right hand side it shows you the detailed surface information. So this means you can get all the information about a planet without actually flying over to it. But how can we locate a specific type of planet? Well, this information is on the bottom right of the screen. This will adapt as you move left and right on the spectral analysis scanner. You'll also notice that each type of planet has its own unique distinctive sound. This will help you detect what type of planet you're actually looking at. So then, to locate things on the FSS, you need to do two things. Locate signals and bodies by moving left and right along the spectral analysis and panning the camera around space to zero in on your target. Your target will be whatever signal you've selected on the spectral scanner. Now the signal shapes as well as the arrows above the spectral analysis do provide more information but it's unnecessary for the moment and it's something we'll come back to in an advanced tutorial. For now, simply use the arrows to help you zero in on the signal source and you'll know when you're in the correct location because a solid circle will appear in the blue hotspot. You can then simply zoom in on the target using the zoom keybind. Now let's take a few moments to get more familiar with these spectral analysis as this is a very important part of this particular scanner. The spectral analysis is broken down into sections. Each section will indicate a different type of area or thing to be discovered. And you can see a very good example on this image here created by Cohen Leth. And this will show to you how you can figure out what type of object you're looking at simply by looking at the spectral analysis. Gas giants are in the far right. Unidentified signal sources are in the far left, everything else in between. In short then, you can get a very quick high level overview of any system simply by looking at the spectral analysis. Another thing worth mentioning is that some systems have multiple layers to them. For example, some gas giants have many moons around them, or some stars are vast off in the distance. And this means you may have to zoom in multiple times before uncovering the chosen body. And just look how far away this one is. Again, you can see all this without flying over all those massive distances. In short then, the FSS is a powerful tool to allow you to discover all signal sources within a particular system. Whether that's unidentified signal sources, gas giants, moons, any other type of planet, or indeed stellar phenomena. Now the other of the two tools you're going to want to know about is the Detailed Surface Scanner. Now the detailed surface scanner is completely repackaged. Originally you needed the detailed surface scanner to get all the detailed surface information from a planet. So the detailed surface scanner no longer actually does that as that function is served by the FSS. Instead what the detailed surface scanner does now is launch probes at a planet in order to map it. 
And why would you want to map a planet? Well, for two reasons. One, to get the first mapped by tag, which gives you a credit bonus, and secondly, to find any surface features down on the planet. Now, choose the detailed surface scanner. You need to switch to analysis mode, which is the second of the uh, hub modes we now have, analysis mode and combat mode. And you can do this using the keybind that you've set. You also need to make sure that you set your uh, surface scanner into a fire group, as shown here. So, once near the planet and once in analysis mode, activate the detailed surface scanner and you will be presented with this screen. What you need to do now is fire probes at and around the planet. Probes fired directly at the planet will fly directly towards it and impact on the surface. You can see that happening right now. Planets fired to the edges and the sides of the planet will fly around it and be pulled in by the gravitational forces. These will impact on the sides or even the rear of the planet. You can even toggle the planet and get a rear view of it so you can see where you need to impact the probes next. Once you reach 90% coverage, it's considered complete. It will jump to 100% and you will have the planet completely mapped. Now, you do have infinite probes, but you also have an efficiency target. If you reach this target, then you'll get a credit bonus reward for mapping the planet with limited number of probes. So as I said, one of the reasons to map a planet is to get the mapped by tag. The other reason is to find surface features, and you can do that here. As soon as you've scanned the planet, if there's any features down there, they will be listed in your nav panel. You can then select these and fly directly towards them. You can see here that now there's been selected, there's actually a marker beacon come up, allowing us to very easily locate the surface feature. And what's more, if the surface feature happens to be on the dark side of the planet, then don't forget, you can use night vision. That then brings us to the end of this video, and I hope it's been helpful for you. And don't forget to keep an eye out for my other exploration video, which will be an advanced tutorial. As always, thanks for watching, and I'll catch you guys and girls next time.